Thank you for listening to another episode of Taking Stock, Talking All Things Retail. In today's episode, Eric Matusiak, President of 63 Advisors, and Norbert Altenstad, Director of Sales and Marketing at Just IS, will discuss innovative ways to build omnichannel rewards programs that inspire customer loyalty. Eric is President of 63 Advisors, a boutique consulting firm focused on the retail and broader consumer business sector. An active thought leader and public speaker, he has over 25 years of experience advising clients across North America on strategic decisions, technology investments, and operational improvements. And Norbert, the Director of Sales and Marketing at Just IS, with more than 20 years experience in supply chain and logistics consulting, retail operations, and final mile delivery solutions. He has worked with international companies on their digital transformation, global growth, and customer engagement strategies. With that, I will pass it over to Norbert to start the conversation about Omnichannel Rewards programs and customer loyalty. Thank you, Melanie. Retailers and brands are heavily investing in more personalized experiences for their customers. Fostering shopper loyalty remains a top priority as consumers resume what uh, let's call it the normal spending habits. Eric. Loyalty programs are mature and many are quite undifferentiating and unexcited. Can you speak to what you've seen in the industry lately? Yeah, sure, Norbert. Thanks. Um, I'll, I'll speak to a couple of points here, kind of where where, where we've come from, but also where I, I think we you know we need to go and, and where some retailers are are going today. Uh, where we've come from is uh, is, is you know, for call it twenty thirty plus years is loyalty programs being very much equated to almost a, a couponing program where it's just collect points, yes, a little bit of, of, of customer purchase data, but the rewards for customers have been fairly limited in the sense of get a, you know, get some, get some money off on your next purchase. Uh, and so they've been very sort of simple programs. And as you mentioned, they're very mature and, and you know, the, the average Canadian, I think, has, uh, or American has, you know, eight plus, you know, memberships. So that's where we've come from. Uh, where where we're going, and, and where I I often tell retail uh, clients where we do need to go um, is thinking of loyalty as a much broader uh, a broader picture. That it's not just a points program. Uh, it's about uh, it, it's about a broader set of rewards. Yes, it can include uh, the you know I'll say sort of the a, a points component to it. But it's about really customer engagement and and building that loyalty through through customer engagement at at, at every uh, at every touch point and every uh, point in that omni-channel universe. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. With uh, more e-commerce uh, fundamentals in place, retailers and brands are turning their attention to technology tools to uh, engage their customers across all digital platforms. As a result. Consumers have become much more fickle because of uh, product ubiquity and price transparency and, in essence, giving them the upper hand to shop across multiple platforms and, and brands. Eric, how would you suggest the retailer get started with their loyalty transformation? Let's say if we take it from a crawl, walk, run approach, what's the first step or stage you would uh, suggest? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, th and thanks for that. And, and it is it is a journey. Um, one of the things is that you, as you mentioned, there is, uh, I, I, and I tell clients is that you don't have to be leading edge out of the gate. Uh, that's usually a, a a sizable and often risky thing to try and jump to that run stage right out of the gate. Some some organizations do manage to do it, but it usually requires a lot of um, you know a, a lot of focus, and you still have a business to run. So. I, I typically kind of say that, that clients can can go through three stages. So that that first stage could be a, effectively a basic points program, but if you think of any kind of any kind of structure or program, it has to have a solid foundation, and that foundation is customer information. So very basic things that I still see many retailers you know are not that clean at is just identifying who are your customers. Uh, do you have them uniquely? Uh, captured somewhere in terms of, uh, of course, uh, you know, respecting privacy legislation and so forth, is that uh, that they've opted into providing uh, names, uh, customer numbers, uh, some sort of tracking of of purchase history, very basic foundational information. But you need that in order to move to 
the, the next stage where you can then start mining that customer information uh, and creating uh, more proactive offers for clients uh, so that when they are in the store or online, because the, the store is both virtual and physical, uh, you, you, you're, you're identifying those customers or, or like segments of customers and saying, we, we think that you need this next offer. Um, you know, to put it in more concrete terms, uh, it could be if you're at, a, uh, at, at, an, at an apparel store uh, that they know that you bought, uh, you know, a particular outfit, but, you know, you're looking for accessories and these are the things that we have on sale. Or it could be a, a, a proactive reach out before you're even in the store uh, saying that, look, we noticed that you, you know, you really like, uh, you know, tank tops. We have tank tops on sale this week. Um, so that that's the kind of proactive offers that are that are very targeted to those to those um, uh, to those uh, customers. And I think that's the difference between sort of the starting stage, call it that crawl and the walk stage, is that at the crawl stage, you may be a little bit more like peanut butter in the sense that you you know you spread offers around and say, everybody gets 20% off this week, click here. When you get to that second stage, you're actually being more targeted. So Norbert, you might get a different offer than I would, right? Uh, based on our, pro on our profiles, our shopping behavior, et cetera. That's second stage. Um, quite a few retailers do that today, but a lot don't. Uh, the third, the third stage, which is I'd say kind of closer to leading edge, is that you're, and you can see I use the the, the construction analogy because it is foundational. You have your building blocks of of customer information. Your second thing is analysis and targeting and tailoring. Your third stage is where you start taking some of the more modern tools. You know, people often use the term sort of you know AI or or machine learning, etc., where you you really pump up that that targeting and tailoring to run uh, test programs. Uh, you know, kind of the test and learn kind of uh, atmosphere at, at, at a retailer where you're, you're, you're testing different offers to different segments, seeing which perform better and refining on a regular basis. You, you need some technology to make that happen. That again is third stage. You don't have to be that out of the gate, but you do have to start, uh, start somewhere, but understand that that's the journey that you, that you get to to be leading edge. Yeah, that's very, very, very important. I mean, uh, a key word that you said there is that customer journey. And, you know, the key to customer value all comes down to communication, collaboration, and transparency, and moving that customer down that journey of, uh, you know, initially making them a consumer and then converting them to customer and then ultimately converting them to become a client through some key tools that are out there like a CRM where you can do some, you know, RFM analysis, re recency, frequency, and monetary. But many companies, they don't have to try to do all that alone to go through that whole crawl, walk, run approach. There's so many partners out there that can help them, whether it's uh, technical, it's consultative, um, or it's solution-based uh, partners. Can you maybe speak to that, Eric? Yeah, yeah, no, that's it's a great point, Norbert. It, it, you know, if somebody listening to that first, you know, our, our last few minutes there might be scared, right? It's, it seems like a lot to do and a lot of expertise to bring on board. And, and if you do do it yourself, it does require an investment. Uh, these things, you know, none of this happens just out of thin air. It, it means, uh, like any other major shift uh, in, in any business, you've got a, you know, a, a, a systems component. That's one thing but you need business processes and a business culture uh, to, to make sure that that actually sticks. And that often means either uh, hiring new people or retasking other people to make sure that they, they understand that. So all of that, if you try to do it yourself, does seem like a lot to handle. So to your point, there are, uh, you know, there are organizations out there, for example, third parties that will uh, effectively are an outsourcer on, on the loyalty front. They'll, they'll, They'll control the information. They'll capture it. They even administer the cards in terms of sending things out to, to, to customers. They'll do the proactive emailing on your behalf. So it is sort of a bit of a, a, a customer marketing department in a box for you. Um, there's like anything else. If you're outsourcing it, you're clearly paying for it, but you're paying, you're, you're buying the expertise in their system so that you don't have to yourself. So there are third parties that, that work on a, on a certainly a national, regional and global basis to make that happen. Uh, that's one. That's one component. The other component is that you can always join coalition programs. Uh, some of the airlines and some of some independent card programs, such as uh, Air Miles, I think is a is a global organization. Have um, they're, they're called coalition programs for a reason. Is that you can join that coalition. Now, like all.
is you you get out what you put in. So where where you do join one of these coalition programs, you do get the benefits of some of the customer information, but recognize that if it's, for example, a credit card company who's running that program, they they effectively become the you know they're 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 first in line. Um, you you may get you may get pieces of information and so forth, uh, but you won't get the, the the full view because of course they they want to make sure that they have that data for themselves. So you 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 don't have to pay as much, but you don't get as much. But they are easier ways to get in, and you could even even through your evolution, even if you start with one of these programs, it doesn't mean you're stuck with them for life. Um, so there are examples. Of, of organizations that uh, we know of one here, uh, a, a, a large liquor chain uh, that has had, you know, started off in a coalition program and is now launching their own uh, because they, again, they feel like they need to, they need to know more about their customers and control more of that customer experience and customer journey. They're clearly prepared to make the investment, but again, just as you evolve and, and like all things get more familiar with it, you, 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 you get more comfortable with doing it yourself. Yeah, well, you know, those are all very good examples and points that you just uh, brought up. We know that it costs a lot less to sell a repeat customer than acquire new new ones. That's why, you know, brands invest in loyalty and reward programs. I recall working with a major optical, a global optical client uh, some years ago and implementing various solutions and, you know, some of which allowed consumers to convert participating reward programs and loyalty points into cash or crypto and other types of rewards, um, you know, or, or even Bitcoin uh, rewards, uh, letting people earn and own, uh, 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 and own uh, Bitcoin, uh, or even swap their loyalty rewards, uh, cash back and gift cards between different brands. There's just so many, you know, partners and solutions that are out there. Each one of them can be personalized for the brand and ultimately down to the consumer to have a deeper uh, consumer engagement um, for the for the brands and create additional loyalty. So. At the end, Eric, what's uh, some of the best practices or best next steps that you would suggest or recommend to anyone considering, um, you know, innovative ways to build omnichannel rewards programs and really truly inspire customer loyalty? Yeah, you know, thanks, Norbert. I'll, I'll I'll break your your question down into two parts uh, in terms of what would I do next and here are some best practices just so that it's it, there's a lot again for for the for people to to, to digest here it, it in terms of where you start is uh, I, I always recommend starting with a, a, a very much a high level business plan um, as much as there, there there ultimately is probably a technology investment here uh, I see too many too many organizations rush into buying technology without knowing the problem they're trying to solve or the opportunity they're trying to capitalize on. So I do view all, all of these investments should be primarily a business uh, investment first. So what I recommend is, is very a very much sort of a, a, a very, I'll say, you know, sort of focused but high level plan around, well, why, why do we need a loyalty program? Um, what are the dimensions of that? What do we actually want to give our customers back? Do we even know what they want? Like, should we? Do we assume that everybody wants a points program, points back? Maybe not. Maybe maybe our customers, depending on the the sort of brand we are, if we're, for example, a socially conscious organization, uh, perhaps we want you know we want to give you know uh, give rewards to customers that are different. Tom's Shoes is one, for example, that you know that they have a very clear value proposition and and how customers feel like they're they're getting a, a loyalty reward. And it's not necessarily a points program. It's about knowing that they're doing good um, through their through their purchase. So that's just one example of somebody who, who probably did some thought first. So that's what I recommend is understand why you're doing this in the first place, because that will then guide whatever investments you make. So once you've figured that out and 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 say, well, what are some of the best practices out there um, in the loyalty space? Um, in in no in no particular order, some of the things that we we talk about with clients. Um, is a uh, short time to first reward. Whatever that reward is, more and more these days, everybody, everybody, I think, has shorter and shorter attention spans for everything. Um, you know, that first reward's got to appear quickly. If it doesn't appear literally either on that first purchase or within the first week or two, 
I, you know, customers lose interest and that just becomes another card in their wallet. Um, the other thing is, uh, is making it very clear to customers is that if you have customer tiers, as most loyalty programs do, making it very clear what's required to move to the next tier um, you know, so that people understand what behaviors they may need to make. And it kind of prompts them to be like, oh, I just have to order a little bit more this month and I reach silver status. Uh, the, the, the third thing would be is, and this may be a, a kind of an obvious statement in today's market is, you've got to be digital first. Um, this is something that people are going to want to do on their digital and mobile devices. Uh, they want to be able to check their account, see how they're doing. You have to be that out of the gate. Um, and then the other thing I think is, uh, is you know, as much as a lot of these things can feel very remote, I, I think there is a, you know, call it the human touch uh, around best practices. Uh, thanking customers for their loyalty, uh, both in terms of a little message saying, thanks very much for visiting our store today. Thanks very much for your purchase uh, or, or attending a particular event or, or uh, spending their points in a certain way. Uh, I, I think that's still part, of, I think we're all humans and I still think we miss some of that sometimes. And, and another component to that is, is creating those moments of delight and surprise for customers where uh, you didn't expect it, but thanks very much, you know, you've reached a certain milestone or thanks very much for your reach, reach and purchase. Here's a gift for you, whatever that gift is or some sort of benefit that they weren't expecting that really makes them feel, you know what, I'm gonna stick with the with this company because they really get me. Um, and so those 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 things on the, on the human side, I think are also part of the best practice so that it's not just a mechanical uh, points calculator. Yeah, that's that, that's very important. I mean, uh, you know, the, the human touch, uh, the digitization, the opportunity to uh, work with partners, whether it's uh, software or consultatively uh, with experts like yourself, or or even uh, just to the company that I'm with that offers many programs and solutions, all around build, building these kind of innovative uh, solutions uh, with brands out there that are looking to engage their customers. So I think this has been really, really helpful. I believe the audience is probably taking a lot of good points away from this uh, conversation that we've had. And I really do sincerely appreciate your advice and uh, uh, regarding this topic, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of Taking Stock, Talking All Things Retail. In today's episode, Eric Matusiak, President of 63 Advisors, and Norbert Altenstad, Director of Sales and Marketing at Just IS, discussed innovative ways to build omnichannel rewards programs that inspire customer loyalty. We hope you enjoyed their conversation and will contact us if you have any further questions or comments. Please enjoy past and future Taking Stock, Talking All Things Retail podcasts on this channel. We appreciate your loyalty.